Your Bible says those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So then how do we come into obedience to the Word? Peter said it's through the Spirit. Hallelujah! woo Through the Spirit, we're able to live pure. Through the Spirit, we're able to obey the laws and the commands of God. The Ten Commandments need not be a threat to Spirit-filled people because through the Spirit, we can obey them. Between the power of the Lord and the power of the Spirit, we can walk in perpetual victory. We can have a victory after victory after victory through the power that is available to us in the Holy Ghost. Paul said, know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. What makes us the temple of God? The Spirit of God in us. What makes us the temple of God? Tell me. Here's another quote from Paul. You are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Through, so through the infilling of the Holy Ghost, we become God's house, God's habitation. But only by the Holy Ghost. Now, how did, how did Paul know this? Well, Paul is not just reciting some dead theology he learned in seminary. No, Paul himself was Holy Ghost filled. In Acts chapter 9. Paul became Holy Ghost filled with fire, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. We know this about Paul. So when he wrote about Holy Spirit experiences, he was talking out of his own experience. God helped the church. So many preachers talk about the Holy Spirit that they learned from men who never had the Holy Spirit. Your Bible discusses the spirit-filled life exclusively from men who experienced the spirit-filled life. Are y'all here? Now notice. Notice what Peter says, chapter 2, look at verse 5. You also, as a living stone, are built up a what kind of house? That is a house in the spirit realm for God's habitation. Now we're only a spiritual house as we're full of the Holy Spirit. That's clearly taught in the Bible. We're only a spiritual house, or you can say it this way, we're only an habitation of God or a house of God as God's spirit fills our vessel. You understand that? Yes. See, they would have understood that because they all spoke in tongues in the Bible. You also, as living stones, you are built up a spiritual house. What's the next one? Holy. Not just priesthood, holy priesthood to offer up to offer up to offer up what now here is the greatest sacrifice we offer up ourselves the bible says present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable see listen see we present ourselves listen look at me once i get filled with the holy ghost and that with a burning fire then i present myself to god Oh, Father, here I am. Tell me what you want me to say. Tell me where you want me to go. Show me what you want me to do. Well, and you know what God said? When you get the Holy Ghost, he said, I'll dwell in them and I'll walk in them. Woo! I love it when I preach because I know the Holy Ghost starts walking in me, starts talking through me. Oh, Holy Ghost, preach Holy Spirit. 
And your Bible says, hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to the church. Well, see, this wasn't just talk to them in a Sunday school class. To the New Testament church, this is how they live. Notice what your Bible says. We're to offer up spiritual sacrifices. What's that next word? Say it again. Now, what's the implication here? Whatever is not of the Spirit is not acceptable to God. Whatever is not of the Spirit is not what? It's not acceptable to God. This is an amazing thing. Peter said we're to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable. Now here's what I want you to key key in on. He said offer up. That's up to heaven. That's before the throne of God. If you want to be presented up in heaven before God acceptable, you must be spiritual. You must be spiritual. You must learn to live in the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm sorry to tell you what your Bible says. I apologize to be honest and speak the truth. But I still do it. Not to bother anybody, to help everybody. Now notice please Romans chapter 15. See we want to offer up sacrifices acceptable. Now notice Romans 15 please. If we believe anything the Bible says, we'll carry a great concern. For believers, for the church in America, we'll be bothered. Because many will not be acceptable. Amen. Notice if you will Romans chapter 15. And look at verse 16. Notice the latter part of it, verse 16 says. That the offering up. You see that? Amen. Peter said we're to offer up sacrifices acceptable right? Yes. Where here's the same phrase. Offer up. That the offering up of the Gentiles is always people. That the offering up of the Gentiles might be what? That's what we want. We want what we offer up to be acceptable. Peter said it'll be acceptable if it's spiritual. If it's of the Holy Spirit. Is that not what Peter said? Yes. Now Paul picks up the same theme. He says... What we offer up to God can only be acceptable. Notice what he says there. Being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. What's the point? Whatever we offer up that's acceptable to God has to first of all be sanctified. Has to be holy. And it can only be holy by what? Tell me. Say it louder. By the Holy Spirit. So it behooves the church to encourage one another to be spirit-filled. I said it behooves the church for us to inspire one another. Not sitting around talking about I'm saved. I know I accepted Tether. I know my sins were washed away five years ago but you're still drinking today. You're not sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And so your offering up will not be acceptable. That ought to make us quiver. Let's keep reading, ma'ams and sirs. Look at verse 18. Notice, all sanctification is by the Holy Spirit. Amen. All sanctification is by what? Holy Not by the blood of Jesus, but by what? The Holy Look at verse 18, please. Notice the latter part. 
but make uh, to make the Gentiles what? Obedience. See, there is no obedience without the Holy Spirit. Without obedience, there can be no sanctification. Sanctification is a result of walking in light with God's word, walking obedient to what God says. No person can do that without the Holy Ghost. Notice. To make the Gentiles obedient by word and by deed. What kind of deeds? Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of what? Spirit. Notice people become obedient by the power of the Spirit of God. Well, that's how I became obedient when I got saved. There were mighty signs and wonders. Mighty demonstrations of power in the services. And being in that atmosphere, I just got sucked into it and got filled, you see. I don't know how long I was saved. Maybe it wasn't more than a week or two. Maybe two, maybe three at the most. But I was trying to get filled from the first day they told me about it. And then one day I just say, I'm going to receive the Holy Ghost today. And I went to church. I sat on the back row. Was it my home church? And evangelist was preaching at somebody else's church. I just went there. I sat. I just raised my hands and just began to speak in tongues. And it's been that way since. But see, I was in that atmosphere. Mighty signs and wonders. The power of the Spirit would flow in those meetings. And the Bible says in people, they become obedient. When they get exposed to the Holy Ghost and his power, you see. Are y'all here? Yes. Not just hearing a nice little message and say, well, I got saved. I've accepted Jesus. Do you know about the Holy Ghost power? Can I continue? Yes. Notice Romans 8, please. Wait, wait, wait. Let me show you one more. Philippians 2. Let's look at this, please. Philippians 2, let me show you this. I love this one. Hallelujah. Philippians 2. Woo! Then we're going to go to Romans 8 and maybe wind this thing down. Notice Philippians 2. You, Look at verse 12. When you have it, please shout amen. amen. Notice Philippians 2 and look at verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have what? Now, who always obeys? You know these folks spirit-filled. Because without the Holy Ghost, we can't half obey. God says be in church, we can't hardly do it. God says pay tithes, we can't hardly do it. You know your problem, you need help. Amen. Now, notice he said you've always obeyed. Notice what it says. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, church... As you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now what? Much more in my absence. You're obedient even more that I'm not even there. Now, what's the point? When folks are spirit-filled, they obey if the pastor's watching or not. See, when I got spirit-filled, See, let me just talk about these kids who left here and gone to college. You know they're going to be okay. Here's why. Because they left with the Holy Ghost. As long as they stay in an atmosphere where they can remain spirit-filled, they will remain obedient to God. Woo! I said it's the Holy Ghost! Now, how in the world people obey when the dad ain't watching? You've always obeyed, he said. Not only in my presence, but now even in my absence. You're even more obedient. You know these folks had to be spirit-filled. Yeah. Obedience is only by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Are y'all still in the room? Yeah. Well, now how do you know it was by the Holy Ghost? Look at the next verse. For or because it is God working in you. Now, what's the work of the Holy Ghost, you tell me? Is God working sanctification to obedience in you? 
See, this, see, our obedience is never in ourselves. It takes the surrender of self to the work of the Holy Spirit. And until you do that, you're not going to ever be without struggle sitting up in church pretending. And then finally, when we stand before him on that day, you discover you were never acceptable. The Bible says we'll stand before him acceptable on that day when we stand before him faultless. What your Bible says, he's able to do that for you, not you. What is our role? We surrender to the Holy Ghost. Father, fill me today. Fill me today. Holy Spirit of God. Notice, please, ma'ams and sirs. Verse 13. You're able to be obedient, verse 13 now, because it is God who worketh in you both to will, to want to do right, and to do right of his what? See, God works in you a willingness. Like I told you, last Sunday, I loved beer. I didn't know how in the world folks drank gin. That's the nastiest stuff under heaven. But I could, but I love beer. So I would drink beer, nothing like an ice cold one. I loved it, beer ice cold. I told you last one, I could taste beer right now. I got to remember, I know exactly how beer tastes, how it felt in my mouth. I understand all that. But you know what? Since I've been saved and received the Holy Ghost, I haven't had a will to reach for it. God is now working his will in my life, and then he helps me to do it. And the Bible says it's his good pleasure. Well, it's not good. See, I used to get so drunk, Morgan, I would urinate on myself. I did that twice. They called that pissy drunk. I loved it so much, I didn't want to stop. Are y'all listening? Yeah. But then I got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. I was baptized in the power of God. Yeah. I was baptized in the fire of heaven. Yeah. Notice, please. God is working in us. How? By the power of the Holy Ghost. Paul said it's only by God doing his work in you through the Spirit are you obedient. Not only when mom is watching, but when, when mama isn't watching, you're still obedient. Because God has given you a will not to pick up that filth, not to punch that button on your computer. And be addicted to the worst filth known to man. I was reading some stats the other day. I was shocked. The, the statistics, the percentage of young children who've seen bestiality on the web. That is just, and a person like that can never be normal. Once they become that contaminated and polluted. But yet we have young people here living right. Not contaminated. It's because of the Holy Ghost. What? Notice please. Look at verse 3 of chapter 3. God helps us to fulfill his good pleasure. Woo! His good pleasure. But notice Paul says here. For we... That's you all and myself. We are the circumcision. What does circumcision mean? To cut away the flesh. We've had our flesh dealt with. But we are the circumcision who worship God where? Now we saw from a few lessons back that word worship can also be translated serve. If you look it up in the Greek, 
The same Greek word is translated worship and then it's sometimes translated serve. So we can read it this way. We serve God in the spirit. Hallelujah. See, when you serve God in the spirit, you can fulfill his good pleasure. But it's not you. You're in the Holy Ghost. You're where? And then notice when Paul says, and we have no confidence in the flesh. We have no confidence in the flesh. We're out of the flesh. We serve God in the spirit. And because he said, me and you church people, he said, because we're in the spirit, we can fulfill his good pleasure. We can walk obedient. We can do his will. But it's because we got the Holy Ghost. Notice again, as I shared last week, every verse that has to do with sanctification, obedience, and serving God right, it's always by the Holy Ghost. Not by the blood of Jesus, it's by the Spirit of God. Can I get a loud amen? amen? If these things be true, then we are behooved to ask God to fill us with the Holy Ghost. Yes. And our children. Yes. Peter said it's for you and your children. Yes. The Holy Ghost in filling with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Peter said it's for you and who else? When I read that verse, I believed it. I didn't just speak in tongues. My children spoke in tongues. I made them speak in tongues when they were that big. Speak in tongues, girl. Pow, louder, girl. Hey, say some more, girl. Woo, glory to God. Because I read in my Bible, it's for me and for my children. God don't want me to live right and my children go to hell. God, help us to become a New Testament church. Romans, please, I got to hurry up. I'm almost through. Romans chapter 8. I'm going to wind down and show you something that I think is vital, and then I'm going to stop. We're going to read some passages here in Romans, and then we're going to be through. Notice Romans 8, please, and look at verse 13. Let's start there. Notice Paul is talking to Christians. He's not talking to unsaved people. He's talking to Christians. And let me emphasize again, every New Testament writer we are reading from spoke in tongues, were baptized with Holy Ghost fire. Yes, Lord Jesus. And it was their whole objective Hallelujah. to get the church like they were. Amen. We have a Holy Ghost church because your pastor has been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 So I can talk about it. Amen. Now notice. For if you believers live after the flesh, you shall what? Yeah. There's no exceptions. I don't care how many times you get baptized in water. I don't care how many times you come to, to the altar and accept Jesus and have your sins walked away. Uh, uh, Washed away. When you leave the altar and go back to school or work and you pick up the same bad habits, you are going to die that's eternal death. Right. You can't go to heaven without living right. That's right. Don't let no preacher deceive you. Right. Nobody goes to heaven in sin. Yeah. Saint, or let me say it this way, Christian or non-Christian. Yeah. Now notice, for if we, or if you, if we live after the flesh, you shall surely die. But if you believers through the what? Spirit. See, you don't get right without the help of the Spirit. But if you through the Spirit do mortify means to put to death. We get our English word mortician from this word. Mortify means to kill, to put to death. But if you through the Spirit do put to death. The deeds of your body, you shall what? Live. Well, who wants eternal life? Yes. You got to put to death your flesh. Yes. How do I do that? Through the Spirit. Yes. Through the Spirit. Yes. Not through the blood of Jesus. Through the Spirit. Yes. Are y'all here? Yes. Notice. Look at me and notice. The blood of Jesus takes care of my sin. The Holy Spirit takes care of my flesh. The Holy Spirit Hallelujah. takes care of my sin. 
I'm sorry, the blood of Jesus takes care of my sin. The Holy Spirit takes care of my flesh. And we need both. The work of the blood and the work of the Spirit. Now watch, please. I got to hurry up. Look with me, please, ma'ams and sirs, at verse 7. Because the carnal mind is an enemy against God. A carnal-minded person cannot please God. You can be a Christian, but if your mind is carnal, you are against God. How do you know? Look at what you do. Because the carnal mind is an enemy against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed is it possible for it to be. A carnal-minded person cannot obey God's law, cannot obey God's word. I don't care if you're a Christian or non-Christian. You can be a Christian and still be carnal. Notice the next verse, please. So then, they, any one of us in the church, that are in the flesh, what? And we're not to be in the flesh, are we? We're to kill the flesh, right? We're to condemn the flesh to death, right? Now, just follow me, please. But you are not in the flesh, thank God, but where are the, the believers to be? Read it. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If you're in the spirit only, if so be that the spirit of God does what? You are not in the spirit if you've never been spirit filled. You're not in the spirit if you've never been. You can't be in the spirit without being baptized in the Holy Ghost. See, every New Testament writer understood this. Thank you for watching Victory for Today. To request your copy of today's broadcast on CD or DVD, call 407-296-7131 or email us at victoryfortoday at aol.com. Until next time, remember, only through the cross of Christ, there's hope for tomorrow and victory for today.